Hi everyone, welcome to this new tutorial. Today we're gonna start looking at um, how to install, deploy, uh, as you like, MySQL on Oracle Cloud. Now, um, I know Ubuntu instance. Now, the, um, the installation process is extremely straightforward, so it take like no more than 30 seconds, really. Um, what is gonna be a little bit tricky and complex, no complex, just tricky, is uh, ensuring that we can connect from outside, the, uh, or remotely, if you like. The consideration here is that more, um, I have a, a, a local development where I'm doing like um, a, a jungle project and I wanted to connect with a database. Now, I didn't want to install MySQL or Postgres within my own machine, so that's the reason why I was installing uh, on the cloud. And then, because I have to connect uh, from, from my um, from my own premise, if you like, I need to make sure that the connectivity is available from uh, outside or uh, OCI in general. Okay, so without any further ado, previously we had configured some different instances. So today we're going to install um, everything on this IMD. I don't want to. I don't want to cheat on the ARM instance. It's actually been already installed because I was trying it and make sure that all the commands work. So what are we going to do now next is to SSH within our uh, instance. So um, here is where you have to uh, include the SSH key. Um, I have uh, produced to um, reuse the same uh, key to avoid uh, losing it. So uh, let's go. Now we're gonna, uh, as we said, connect. And now I have a copy and paste. Um, sorry, I have another notebook on the other side of the screen where I can just copy and paste a few, a few notes. I will uh, link in the description um, uh, where this uh, tutorial is actually located. So we go and uh, apt get update. Uh, after that, we're gonna do an upgrade. It's not certainly required, but just as a, Best practice, I would say. Um, so we're gonna go for it. Everything was already installed, was already upgraded, so it's not really anything that the system is doing. And uh, then we do a good uh, sudo apt install MySQL server. So this is the command to install apt uh, to install the uh, MySQL server, which we're then gonna create uh, the uh, the database, the user, etc. So we're gonna connect to it. Now there is this command before it was not. A few, few months ago was not there, but it doesn't really matter. Just click OK, OK, and then we can go. OK, so you're basically done. Now uh, my SQL is installed, so everything you wanted to do is to do that. Uh, you're actually ready to go. Um, OK, so <clears throat> now next step. Next step will be to um, start uh, changing configuration and create the users, et cetera. Okay, we will now Okay, now we have installed the MySQL. So what we can now do is to try that everything is actually working. So we can see, for example, what's the status here? All right. So as you can see, it's already active and running. Um I do believe we need to have an enable command here, just to make sure that it's going to start a startup. So we don't have to install everything. OK, and now what we're going to do is just to check the installation. It's OK. So we do a MySQL minus V to check the version. As you can see, it's installed. It's like 886, uh, 64 boot. Now, what we're going to do next is to, um, I would say we go to the configuration first. So. Um, what we're trying to achieve here is to uh, create a user, create a database, being able to connect, sort it out on that part. But I want to do it on a step-by-step -step basis so you will see what the issues actually that you may have faced uh, are. Okay, so we now have to sudo. We can uh, log in into MySQL. It doesn't require any password at the moment. And then we are going to do some change. So first of all, we're going to change. Um, actually, I'm going to show you something. If we're gonna select the users now, you will see that the root has an authorization socket, all right? And it's the OSIS local host. So we can modify this one to actually uh, um, access the root uh, to a password. So this is what we're gonna do next. There are a lot of guides around this one, but uh, I haven't really found um, why some of the changes were applied and I couldn't really repeat why. Uh, I couldn't really repeat the procedure. So we're now have included the password. So if we do the same uh, user 
uh, check. And now we see that we have um, uh, we have the password to log in. If I exit now, and if I try to do sudo my SQL as before, as you can see, you cannot and uh, you cannot access because you need a password for the root user. So the way to do that is to connect this way. So with a different user, as you can see, my SQL not connect with the root. Uh, and minus p means that it's going to require a password. So now we have the password. The password is the same that we used before. Um, we just create it. So if I do this, I should be able to connect. Perfect. So what we're going to do next is then to create a user, OK, uh, that we're going to use to connect remotely. Now, the funny thing is that it's a very simple uh, process. So. Um, we can create it this way. Um, what I want to check is what what is the what is the um, what is the user now saying? Uh, so we're gonna copy. We just want to copy this command again. Uh, all right. Um, there is no, if you go uh, uh, arrow up and down, it's not going to show now because the commands were given to the previous user. So what we're going to do here is to see that the router now has a nice native password, there's a local loss. Okay, so everything is fine. Um, what we're going to do then, we said we want to create the user director. And here is we need to change the password, right? The type of password as we did before. To do this, we do an uh, alter user in this with this command. Okay, so we create a native user, the command is gone, I worked. So check now. Okay, so we have my native password on localhost. So now, localhost director would be able to log in. We're not gonna even try, it's very straightforward. So just put the user and password, and that's what it's gonna happen. But what we want to do though, is this user cannot connect remotely because it can only connect from the localhost. So if you're gonna try to connect remotely, it won't work. Now, the trick thing is that you're gonna need to use this symbol here. That's something I didn't understand. I thought it was just a placeholder for something else. But this is what, uh, the command should look like. Now it's fine. So if we check again all the users, you will see that now is it. So now this user can technically connect to um, to our uh, database. First of all, we need to create actually the database. So let's do that. Um, the command is just create a database. So we're gonna do that uh, in a sec. Okay, uh, so we create a database now. We already have the user, we create a database, okay? And now what we need to do is to uh, assign the privileges to access this database. We do something extremely straightforward. Um, so we just give all the privileges that there was a road to user uh, for the remote connection. So we do, this should be the command. Yeah, actually it worked. Um, so we should have grant all the privileges to the to access the database. So now um, I think we're done with uh, MySQL. So nothing more need to be done here. Um, but as you can see, and now I wanna show you something. So I'm gonna show you that if we're gonna try to connect with um, to the database, it won't work. So what we're gonna try to do here, I'm using PyCharm just because it's extremely straightforward uh, as a um, database management system for just connectivity really. Um, so we want to create a new connection, okay? Data source is gonna be MySQL. You can use anything else, but really this is just a, a, a simple way to do this. Now, what we said is that we have to connect to this host, so I copy, and then I'm gonna go back here, gonna push this one out. We said that the user was called director, right? The password that we created was a secure password we use. Um, so we just need to find out what it is. So I do a copy and paste, I'm not gonna make any mistake. Just give me a sec. 
Okay, so first of all, it was direct. And then the password should be, yeah, CK password. So I take this one, I put it here, then the database that we create is called assessment. Now I do apply. Yes, for all. Do okay. Cool. Now just that check of it, and you should not be able to connect. So this one is the MySQL. And that are basically looking at, right? So I'll do this and do actually test connection. You will see that it's not gonna be able to connect. After a while, it's gonna just go in to give me some, some error. Okay, as you can see, we got an error message. The system just didn't connect. Okay, so we have a few more things to do and we are gonna do then those next. So first things first is to um, install, no, sorry, change the configuration file. So we're gonna do this one next, and then oh, we'll take it from there. Right, so which is the file that we need to check? Perfect. So what we're gonna do now, now is to change the configuration in one of the files for MySQL. So, this is the command that you're gonna need to run on your Ubuntu, and this is the file. Uh, it's a sudo now, no, it's very straightforward things as well. So we are gonna change this ping address to from anywhere, okay? You can also restrict to some private or public addresses of offline, but uh, just to make things easier, I don't want to link to just this address. Can be done, but actually, sorry, it's not one, it won't be this one, but it would be the, uh, where the um, the request is coming from. So it would be my actual own machine with the I public IP address, but it doesn't matter. We're not gonna do that. So we do a control X and then yes, and then enter. Okay, now this is this is uh, um, changed. Uh, everything should work, but I found that we need to um, restart uh, the, um, we start the server, otherwise the changes are not gonna be picked up. So what we're gonna do that now next is to restart my SQL. Um, so we're gonna avoid to do that next. Now, I wanna show you that uh, we still cannot connect to our databases. So our databases is here. If I do a refresh, I should hit some issues now. Again, um, I'm gonna show you the error in a second. Okay, as you as you can see, the operation came out, so we won't be able to, to connect. Okay, so what is that missing? Is I'm missing a few more things. So first of all, we need to uh, open it up a door into um, on the uh, on the uh, subnet where uh, the IMD instance belong to, always been located. So this one is the subnet. We're gonna go into the security list, and now we're gonna add the port for, okay, so first of all, from everywhere. And then we add the default port for MySQL 23606, here you go. So you cannot do the description, we won't do that. It's not needed. Okay, so now the, door, the, the port is open. However, if I do again the same try and try to connect, it's not gonna work. The connection, the connection has been refused uh, again. So what is done that we need to do is to uh, open the firewall for um, uh, on the Ubuntu itself. Uh, everything else seems that we have already done. Um, database created, privileges, and so on and so forth. So next, uh, next step, let's do that. Let's change the firewall. Okay, so what we said was that we need to change something on the firewall. Now the firewall Ubuntu uh, sometimes is being managed by the UFW, uh, I think Universal Firewall, and that is being uh, deprecated, I think, on Oracle Cloud and is not available. And if you try, it's not gonna work. Is this the same issue uh, on the Postgres? All right. So now, just to make sure that we have IP table persistence so we can save the changes afterwards. Now we do a pseudo IP tables um, and we change to open for the uh, 3306. OK. 
guy, there was uh, was an error. Okay, the problem was related with this minus. It should have been minus minus. So that's the problem. I think it's just a copy and paste issue uh, from um, some page, HTML pages. So if we do this one now, um, still error. Not sure what's the problem here now, but I think it's probably related with the same. Also, C status is broken. So uh, let's. So let's then copy and paste it from the right location. So let me do this, okay? Just make sure that you put it from a notepad and this one should work in fact, it does. Okay, so then we save the changes, okay? Now we do this. All right, so we open the firewall, we create the users. We should have now everything in place to be able to connect. So uh, let's then give it a try. Okay, so now we are ready to test the connection. So we just go back, we have this. Um, we was having, so you can see all the settings here, and then we go test connection. Succeed. There you go. You're ready to go now. So you have an up and running uh, database open for remote connection on your Oracle Cloud or your instance VM on Oracle Cloud. And um, yeah, you can enjoy that and uh, see you next time for the probably next one will be jungle deployment or autonomous. Um, so connecting from uh, local. All right. Okay, cool. Hope you enjoy. Bye bye.